testosterone. Seriously, enough already. It's more so than just the overall serum number of testosterone. It's more about the free testosterone, what's bioavailable, and what's actually able to be used for what you truly want it for. So in this video, I want to talk about a way that you can start freeing up your testosterone levels, freeing up that already bound up testosterone that you already have so that it can be utilized for building muscles, so that it can be utilized for driving focus, so it can be utilized to motivate you and increase that libido, all the things that you want. You see, in other videos, I've talked about how 98% of your overall testosterone levels are bound to what is called the sex hormone binding globulin. What this means is that it's bound to a hormone that's keeping it in your sex organs. Basically, it's helping testosterone do what it's supposed to do from a reproductive standpoint. However, that little 2%, that free testosterone, is really what we need to tap into to really get the results from testosterone, what we really want. And as we age, both those numbers start to change. You see, our testosterone levels overall start to decline, and our sex hormone binding globulin levels start to increase which means that ratio of available testosterone decreases even more. So I wanna tell you in this video a way that you can take a simple mineral that's proving to be pretty phenomenal when it comes to changing the amount of testosterone that's actually available. So stick with me and I'll explain. This new and emerging mineral is called boron. And to be completely honest, it's not really new and emerging. Just the science in the last five or six years seems to be a little bit more illuminating as to how important boron might actually be. See, boron is what's called a trace mineral. We get it from foods, we get it from the soil, we get it from veggies, if we're eating enough. But the thing is, even if we are actually eating enough broccoli or eating enough of the leafy greens and the spinach and the things like that that actually contain boron, the average person is only getting about one and a half milligrams per day. And right now it's being shown that we need about three milligrams just for regular bodily functions. And now we're not even talking about the ability to actually unleash our testosterone levels and get a little bit more out of our day, more out of the gym, more out of the kitchen. You see, what happens is our soil is so depleted. We're over harvesting. We're farming in pretty much every continent. We're depleting our soil. So a lot of those trace minerals, including boron, are starting to deplete. And they're down to about half of what they even were even 70 or 80 years ago. It's happening extremely, extremely fast. But let me explain exactly how boron works when it comes to freeing up testosterone. And to do that, I'm gonna do what I always do. I'm gonna reference a study like boring old Thomas here. Okay, so this study comes from 2011 from the Journal of Trace Elements in Medicine and Biology. That's a mouthful. Basically, what this journal found when they took participants that were male, they took these participants that were male and they let them go for six weeks consuming supplemental boron. While doing this, they concurrently measured their steroid hormones. Now, I'm not talking like steroids like you're probably thinking, but steroid hormones are our hormones that are created by binding with cholesterol. So we're talking about testosterone. We're talking about cortisol. We're talking about DHEA, pregnenolone, progesterone, estrogen. All the hormones that really have to do with our sex organs, but also a lot of times have to do with our moods. So all of those were monitored. Well, what's interesting is after taking boron for just one week, here is what they found. They found a huge increase in free testosterone. They found a decrease in estrogen. That's the water retention, the stuff that makes you puffy, the stuff that makes you moody. They found an increase in vitamin D. They found an increase in DHEA. And lastly, but most importantly, they found a significant decrease in sex hormone binding globulin after just six hours. Now, if you paid attention to what I said earlier, that sex hormone binding globulin is bad. That is what's holding all our testosterone hostage and keeping us from being able to use it. So the fact that we had an increase in testosterone coupled with a decrease in that SHBG means that we now have more readily available testosterone that can be used for building muscle and for driving focus and motivation. Now, coincidentally, that same research group years prior did another study with boron. And what they found was that 84% of boron was excreted in the urine. Now this sounds like a large number, it sounds like, shoot, why would I want to take this? But let me shed some light on that. That is not a huge number. That means that 16% of exogenous boron was used, utilized by the body, was bioavailable. To give you some point of reference, when you take some vitamin C, usually you're only absorbing three to 4%, 96 to 97% is being excreted through your urine. So that tells us that boron is extremely bioavailable and the body is finding a use for it. It also tells us that more than likely as a whole, we are likely deprived of boron, especially the male population. Now, if I can jump topics really quick, I wanna jump over to vitamin D for a second. You've probably seen my videos on vitamin D. I talk about how vitamin D is technically a hormone and not even technically a vitamin like it's called. 
you see vitamin D is actually converted in the liver through a methylization process, and it helps the conversion of certain hormones. It's actually kind of a root of a lot of our other hormones. So if we can increase our vitamin D levels, a lot of times we can increase our testosterone levels as well. Well, that's exactly why I want to reference this other study that proved that boron has a direct impact on vitamin D as well. So this study found that vitamin D levels increased by 19.4%. This is just after four weeks. That is a huge, huge, huge difference. And that's without supplemental vitamin D and the same amount of sun exposure. So it naturally made the bioavailability and the conversion of vitamin D that much better, which can be linked to more testosterone. Now, additionally, this test got a little bit more quantifiable with their evidence when it came down to free testosterone and found that free testosterone, after just four weeks of supplemental boron, increased by 29%. That is phenomenal. That is increasing and unlocking a third, a third of your free testosterone. Imagine having a third more muscle growth. Imagine having a third more motivation. Imagine having a third more leanness and a third more sex drive. It's almost unfathomable. So this is pretty phenomenal stuff. Now, lastly, that study quantified the increase in DHEA, dehydroapyandosterone. Now, what that DHEA does, it is a precursor to almost all the sex hormones in your body. So what we find out by a 50% increase in that DHEA is that further on down the line, beyond what's even potentially measurable right now, we could be increasing that testosterone even more. So within four weeks, we unlock 30% more testosterone, but we're also unlocking 50% more potential later on down the line for additional hormones to be converted. Testosterone, estrogen, cortisol, progesterone, pregnenolone, all the things that we need to live a healthy male life. But now, as always, you're wondering, how do I take boron? What should I take? How much should I take? The thing is, boron's a trace mineral. And although the bioavailability of it is pretty darn good, trace minerals aren't usually excreted as swiftly as, say, water-soluble vitamins. So there is actually a potential to have a little bit of toxicity with them. Meaning, if you were to take 15 to 20 milligrams, yeah, over time, cumulatively, you might actually have a toxic level of this trace minerals. It's kind of like the same kind of thing with like iron or possibly even mercury. You know, you don't want to take these heavy metals or these minerals in too abundantly. So on the contrary, we have to look at another study that took bodybuilders that were focused specifically on increasing their testosterone levels by supplementing two and a half milligrams of boron every day for about seven weeks. These bodybuilders noticed zero difference in testosterone levels, zero difference in estrogen levels, and zero difference in DHEA. What this tells us is that there is a fine line between not taking enough and taking too much. So with that said, although I'm not a doctor, it's proving to look like we need to be taking between six milligrams and 15 milligrams of boron daily to get the most impact out of it. So with that said, stop worrying about the overall number. Stop worrying about all the supplements that are gonna increase your testosterone dramatically. Because if you just constantly focus on that big number, you're still having to worry about that same 2% that is actually giving you the desired outcome. If you can just unlock the testosterone that you've already got and capitalize on that a bit more, you can stop worrying about having to take exogenous testosterone. You can stop worrying about having to eat the specific kinds of foods. You can stop worrying about spending your money on supplements and focus on what's readily available and just sitting there bound up with the SHBG ready to go. As always, keep it locked in here on my videos. If you have any ideas on a video pertaining to male health, specifically around testosterone, let me know and I'm happy to dive in and do a little bit more research and a few more videos surrounding the topic. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you in the next video.